Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out here. And like the Grand said, yes, naughty pities. We are very, very sorry we have 10 pit bulls. We're not sorry we have 10 pit bulls, we're sorry that they make a fuss, and sometimes it is hard to contain them, and so sometimes crazy things will break out, so please forgive us right out of the gate. It is a Shabbat, everyone. How you doing? Good, good. good. Everyone around this table, my furry head friends, and uh, my dogs as well. How is everyone? Good. Nicole, how are you? Good. And um, Eli? Good. Everyone good? That's good. All right. It is a Shabbat day for everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are going to begin with our prayer. Nicole says do the prayer first, and so let's begin. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you as your creation. We come before you as your people. Father, we are seeking your ways. We're seeking your laws, statutes, and commands. We are seeking your, your direction. Father, we ask that you will guide us, that you will work with us, that you will envelope yourself around every single one of us, and that we will have soft hearts and soft tongues and soft minds, that we are able to work in this world, that we are able to be where we need to be, that we are able to defend ourselves from the evils that are out there. Father, you are wonderful your creation is wonderful your son is wonderful your torah is wonderful father everything about you is absolutely wonderful father please bless this, this ecclesia please bless this little group that we have today father please dwell with us bring the ruha kakadesh help us to understand what you want us to get and father help us to walk away with you in our hearts you in our minds you in our souls that we are able to just continue on we thank you for everything we ask this in the name of yahushua amen and again sorry for these bad pit bulls that is bad pit bull lion and he is a bad people all right it is month 10 on our creator's calendar it is the seventh day on our creator's calendar <clears throat> and it is the um actually yeah is this yeah it's the seventh day it is yeah. the 14th day on the on his calendar the seventh day of january and that leads us to who is all in the um chat room mystical so the grand is here we got Graham, we got Brother Glenn, we got mm -hmm. Judith, Lisa, Jeannie Not of This World made it to our live show today. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, we got, did I say Lisa? I did. Yeah. Zachariah Z and Rhiannon Dredge, Deplorable's here. And I think that's everybody. I think I got everybody mentioned. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very, very, very much for being here. It is just a, a very good day. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sabbath. We are the family who believes that the laws, statutes, and commands are good for all times. We believe that our creator has given us a set of guidelines that we can not only have, but that they will enhance our lives. In fact, we, will, we are taking our creator to his word that he says that he will bless us for keeping the laws, statutes, and commands. And these, these commandments, for those who have never, ever heard this channel, these commandments exist in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And there's no other books, there's no other places, there's, there's no other outside sources that we need to go to. And in fact, according to Deuteronomy 4.2, if we take those outside sources, then we are adding to and we are taking away from the Torah. And we're going to be going over this beautiful Torah here in just a second. And those who believe this is on the cross or not to you today or doesn't matter this is what we're trying to break this this horrible taboo and the lies that we've been orchestrated in because these commandments do belong to us today they are for us today they are for our children they are for our families they are for everything about us and when we wrap ourselves up in them we will be on that kingdom road and we will be where we want to be and when we're not living in sin there's a freedom of be of the torah when you are when you are living in sin, then there is not a freedom of the Torah because you will be judged by that Torah. And so there's no mystery to it. It is very, very simple. It is a cut and dry process. And um, we're going to go over that here in just a second. Before we do that, I would like to invite, can you throw a link, Miss Nicole, to Yahoo and the Torah, please, the downloads? This is a, um, it's actually a very popular section on our website, and we would like to direct everybody there. If you guys have any kind of digital a computer, a uh, computer, uh, Android device, an Apple device, whatever it is, you can download every single one of these absolutely free if you go to the Yahoo and the Torah site. Um, the one that we're going to be reading out of today is the free restored name scriptures. And you guys can grab that. It's a completely free of charge. It's it's all the books of the, of the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, and it has the restored names, Paleo Hebrew 
um, or it's 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 ancient Hebrew. It'd be the ancient Hebrew. Um, it's not actually ancient Hebrew. It'd be Paleo Hebrew, wouldn't it, Mystical? Paleo. Yeah. So it's Paleo Hebrew restored names, and it takes the the pagan stuff out, and it puts the correct names as close as we have. And for those who do not know if this is the first time you've ever heard this, there were no J's in Hebrew. That letter was not invented until the year 1524. And so our Messiah's name is Yahushua. It's Joshua with a Y, but it's not it's not Jesus, as everyone says. And so that is something very important. And these these scripture that are for download have them restored. Another really super cool thing, since this is the um, Torah keeping crew here um, on the Shabbat day, this Torah commands book, um, we're going to be going over this in the next next week, we're actually going to begin this, but it is yet another kind of a list of the laws, statutes and commands of our creator and it is a very, very good book. So those are very good books to download. Um, if you guys, anyone who you know that is in Spanish that needs a restored name scriptures, there's two of them right here. Um, the first one is the Biblia Israelita Nazarena and the Escrituras de Yahuwah. And I'm sure I slaughtered that. Um, but those are also very good, too. So if you do know Spanish-speaking people, they're great translations. All right. Let us get into this. Um, anyone else? Anything else happening there in the chat room, Mr. Cole? No. Okay. Gentlemen, we are going to be going over what we go over every single week. And um, let us begin... First. We do need to do the Shema first. I'm kind of out of whack today, aren't I? Let's, before we do this, let's do, uh, it's a good thing I have a wife. This is why men should have wives, because usually they keep you in, in order, and I, I would be way out of order without mine. So this is the Shema. And Caden, what is the Shema? The Shema is the command. It's hear and obey. Okay, and what do we, before we read this, Jade, give me a little bit about this. What, what is the what is the premise of, where, why is the Shema here? What's it about? Um, well, it should be his command to us, and it is what Yahuwah wants us to hear. It is for obedience, and he says, Shema, O Yisrael, and those who are Yisrael need to hear and listen. Hear and obey, right? And so that is what the Shema is, and so this is kind of at the end of our Torah. It's not really the end of it, but it's it's in Deuteronomy, and so it's it's a very, it's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful thing to read, and the, let's let's start it. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. All right, what do you make of this, Eli? Um, it's something that we should be keeping at all times. What do you make of this? What I was said. It says we should, all of these commands here. That what? What do you make of this this section right here? It is something that we should hear and obey Yahuwah. Yes, but what do you make of this? Uh, the command that I should keep. Okay, and it says I should you should teach them diligently unto your children, right? You, 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 this is the part of this, guys. What do you guys make of what I just read? I, we make it as something that it's Yahuwah's name. We need to remember him. We need to remember that he is the one that brought us out of, out of Egypt. He's the one that brought us out of captivity. Wherever you are, he's bringing us out of captivity in the second exodus. And this is something to prepare us for his way. When he comes to get us all, when he comes to, we will be remembering his name. We will be hearing. We will be obeying because we are Yisrael. We will we will write this on our doorpost, and we should be practicing that now by remembering when we get up. Read something out of Torah when you get up. Read, practice it, study it, talk about it with your family, because that's what we're going to be doing in the kingdom. Is we are going to be talking about this Torah. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be living it, and the, that will be, and we should be living it right now. All right, so here we go, guys. Um, let us take a uh, first look right here at the laws, statutes, and commands. And again, um, the majority of the views on this video come after this and they come over the week and so um the ones listening right now you guys are our small minority family and the uh majority family get it much later but for for what we're going over right now if you've never heard this before these are the greatest things you will ever hear in your life if you write these on your heart your mind and your soul and you you put them in your kids' minds and you you practice them your life will be fulfilled. And a lot of people right now in this world are seeking for answers. Many people are seeking for a salvation. Many people understand that this world is a very wicked world and it is now time to change. Change begins with the Torah. 
You will not understand the heart, mind, and soul of our creator and his son unless you understand what the Torah says very carefully. Okay, very first commandment. Gentlemen, be fruitful. Number two is multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion, have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Commandment six. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Fifty-three times, everybody. There's a lot of them in here. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the feast of unleavened bread, Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ibrahim. And again, I must touch on this, and I don't want to bore this, but there's a lot of people that get this, that come here every single week that have never, ever heard this stuff. What this commandment means right here is this means that these commandments that we're reading right now, they are for you. If you feel like you're a stranger or this is new to you and this is what strange land, this is for you. Literally, this is for you. And so as we're reading these, when we recite them and bring them into our heart, mind, and soul, you will be able to use them in your life as things occur. You will come back to this and go, oh, you know, I shouldn't do this because, you know, this is what the, the Torah says we shouldn't do. Okay, sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. Do not. Keep the Sabbath day. Parents, do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yeah, who is laws for criminals? Just own the witches, wizards, and mediums. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifices to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger fatherless or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do, Do not follow the multitude of evil. Do not judge and righteous against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feasts of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with the other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make your use of anointing oil on a normal person. Do not make your use of perfume on a normal person. Okay, do not eat the fat. Guys, a lot of times people don't know this, and my mother loves to eat the fat on the steak. I have no idea what it is about that, but she actually, that's part of her delicacy, and I've told her over and over and over, we're not supposed to eat the fat. And she keeps telling me that God knows her heart, and I, I, I agree with that, and that is why it is very scary. So don't eat the fat. I, you know, I grew up on that, and I, I didn't know. We weren't in Torah, and it was just a part of it, and, and people actually eat that as a delicacy, and it's not to be eaten. Okay, do what you say you're going to do. Return, what is your neighbor's? Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Now, hold on. Hold on. Before we go any further on this, guys, if this is brand new to you and all of these laws, statutes, and commands are, are foreign to you, and they, they sound, you know, they just sound like it's, it's common sense, right? Don't harm the disabled. You have to understand that we have 65,000 different religions out there that have said these laws don't apply to us. Right? They don't apply to us because they say Jesus came and fulfilled the law. That no longer do we need to keep the Sabbath. He's the Lord of our Sabbath. And they will make up all sorts of evil lies that are not in scriptures. But if you are one of those people that are like, yep, the laws of our, our creator are on the cross, then we just put do not harm the disabled on the cross as well. And I guess you can go into the nursing homes and you can have a heyday if that's your gig, right? Again, that's evil. 
So let's continue on. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Homer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Torah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemni Atzeret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being Nazir. Wear seats on the four corners of your garments. And I'll stop real quick. seats for those who do not know, are threads. They're blue threads, and they're kind of like tassels. And you see the people of Jews, they wear them. They wear all pure white ones. And the pure white ones are not in covenant. That is against the Torah, right? It is, it is a blue thread. And it is a... It is a a command to all the children of Yashrael. So if you are a female, if you are a male, if you are a child, if you are whatever you are, they wear, they apply to you. We are supposed to have them on there. We are supposed to look peculiar. We are supposed to um, be odd. And we are supposed to um, have these out so people are able to see that we are Yah's people, right? At the end days, it talks about that people, they will see people with the tzitzit and they will ask them, take us to your Elohim, right? That's how people will know. And so these are part of the laws. And part of the laws of wearing tzitzit is that you will remember the laws, statutes, and commands at all times. That you literally have to put on your tzitzit and to sin against our Elohim. You're having to bring sin over your body across the tzitzit into your life. And that is what it is, it is about. It is about always remembering 24 7 right when you wake up we are to remember the laws statutes and commands we're supposed to remember our elohim we're supposed to think about our creator we're supposed to ponder on this stuff it, it's all supposed to be part of our lives so much that it shouldn't be foreign to anybody so hopefully these aren't foreign to, to you guys out there okay the law of whoever touches a corpse follow yahuwah's laws of inheritance torah of keeping your oath to yahuwah when in the land the laws of a murder and victims families do not add or take away from the word. My friends, this is probably one of the most important commandments that is out there besides, uh, you know, the, the Shema. It's, in fact, all the commandments are very, very important. But this is one that we seem to violate with 65,000 different religions. When you have any religion at all, it does not matter the denomination, it does not matter what they are, it does not matter how it is. When you look at the list of what we believe and how we believe it, that is what will tell you what, what they are about, right? You are not going to find a religion in the 65,000 different religions that say we need to follow the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator and have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. That's what this is all about. It is a two-way road that we must get to get where we are needing to go. And when we add to the Torah, then we can do things like, well, Jesus became our Sabbath, right? You can say things like, well, I can have a Sabbath any day that I want because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. And I've heard that 100,000 times. That's a lie. I haven't heard that many times, but I've heard it enough that it makes that number credible. It is something that we must understand all the way. Don't add to it and do not take stuff away. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Find the laws upon your hand and the front of between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Kill the false prophets. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. If a city is turned away from Yahuwah, burn the city and kill all inhabitants. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. 
Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. You shall not plant astral poles near the altar. Any man or woman that has done wicked things in your gates, they shall be taken out and stoned. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The t prophet test of Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. The law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. Yep. All right, so what do we got, Mr. Colt? Arthur Magnum is somebody new that just popped in and says, Hi, Arthur. Jesus said the law has been fulfilled. We are to obey the Ten Commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm. Okay. All right, let's run over to Sefer real quick. And let's take a quick look at, um, let's look real quickly at, say, let's do Matthew 7, just right out of the gate. And um, this is something that I, I would, this is, this is really, really interesting. Um, let's read Matthew 7 real quick. Not everyone that says unto me, Adonai, 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 shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Okay, so we have, I'm going to shut that shut off real quick so I can read this. Many will say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name have cast out devils and in your name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Now, for those who do not know what iniquity is, iniquity is sin. There's no other way to define what sin is. We would not know what sin is unless we had the Torah. So um, let's go on. Let's actually go back a couple chapters real quick. Let's go to Matthew 5 real quick, right here. Um, and this is the verse he was quoting here. Let's read this and let's read this in context. Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Okay, hold on real quick. Let's, let's go over this. What did he just say? He said, think not. So he said, if somebody is thinking that it, it, Messiah Yahushua, in fact, this I guess would go to, what was our, our friend's name? Arthur. 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 This is what our Messiah said, right? He says, Arthur, think not that I come to destroy the Torah. And he says, Arthur, I am not come to destroy the Torah, but to fulfill. Okay, well, let's continue on. For amen, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one yod or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the Torah till all be fulfilled. Okay, let's take a quick look at that. Jaden, what does this mean right here? It means that heaven and earth will pass away before any part of the Torah goes away. And it literally says that, and I would like to encourage everybody, if you're in the house, to look outside right now and to look up in the sky and let me know what you see and possibly look down on the ground and tell me what you see out there, right? So right here, our Messiah, Yahushua, says, that when heaven and earth will, will not, I mean, basically before the Torah is gone, heaven and earth will be gone. I still see this. Okay, let's continue on. Whoever, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that's that's about it. There is no, there's no such thing as you know fulfilling the Torah to be gone, right? Our and there's nowhere in scriptures anywhere from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. Now people can take the words of Brother Shaul, and this is my hardest rebuke against the uh, Brother Shaul, is that if you are not learned in the scriptures, you can totally get sideswiped by the words of Brother Shaul. Brother Shaul did keep the laws, statutes, and commands, and he did tell others to keep them as well. So, you know, if, if there, you know, Brother Arthur, you know, you can, um, and, and not just Brother Arthur, but to anybody out there, there is no reason why you wouldn't want to get close to our creator. If you don't, and I guess it's the same, and, and it's the same thing that I asked my mother the other day. I said, Mom, when, um, you know, when I used to get spanked as a child, 
were you happy that I would I disobeyed you? Did did that any of that make you happy? She's like, no, no, that didn't make me happy at all. Then I, I asked her. I said, Mom, then why do you think it's okay that you eat pork and that you worship on the wrong day when it is completely contrary to what our Creator said? Our Father Abba does not want us to do evil things. And so if you spanked me as a child, mother, imagine what our, our creator wants to do to us when we break his commands over and over and over. And so it is, it is up to the person, whoever it is, that we seek these laws, statutes, and commands. And you can either seek them or you can have this lukewarm um, gospel that does not have the Torah and you're not going to survive in life. And if, there, if you're saying there's only 10 commandments, then I guess we can go beat up on the disabled people because it says don't hurt the disabled. All right, let's continue on. Anything else in there? No, everybody else was just saying, uh, like Brother Glenn said, Yehoshua fulfilled the Torah by embodying the Torah. He did not do away with it. Yeah. And then Dredge says not one iota of the law has been removed by Yehoshua. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, the, the, the Torah and, and Brother Arthur and those who are out there who don't, or, you know, don't understand the Torah, Please read it, guys. Please read it. Read this from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Read it as a love letter. It, this is a this is literally a love letter to you from our Creator, and in it, He gives us the guide to life. He gives us the path back home. He gives us the way that we can stay out of trouble. The way that we can stay alive. Right? There's there's a lot of things in the Torah that we could do, and it would end up getting us killed. It is it is a gift from our Creator that He gave us this Torah that we can walk it and it, it is as a blessing and you know i i don't know and genie says to fulfill means to do right and, and arthur says beating up the disabled would not be loving one another but where in the in ten commandments does it say what do we have do we have love one another in ten commandments what do we have yeah, in ten it commandments? just says love your neighbor love your neighbor self. right love your neighbor yourself right so the, the torah has all that stuff right and and yeah beating up the disabled would not be loving another but would arthur would Worshiping on the wrong day and would eating pork when our creator has said that's an abomination. Is that loving our neighbor, which is our creator, right? He's our father. He's our neighbor. He's our everything. It's a set of respect. And a lot of people are very confused. They think there's there's hundreds of thousands of commands or things of that nature when there's really not. There's there's really only, you know, we have about 170 something or maybe a little less because we still have to go through this list. But every single thing on this commandment list is, is beautiful. All right, gentlemen, let's continue on. If you build a house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Laws for the accuser and the accused in the purity of relationships. If a man has a relationship with an engaged woman, both should be killed. If an engaged woman is raped, she's not charged with a crime, but the man shall die. If a man forces himself up on an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. You may eat from your neighbor's vineyard or grain, but you may not take it out of the field. The law of divorce. Newly married man should stay home for one year to be with his wife. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Uh, sorry, I was reading Arthur's, com Arthur's uh, comment on there. And he said, what, is the commandments are judged, the Sabbath is judged by the commandments? The Sabbath is governed by the commandments. Well, that is true, because the, the, yeah. the commandments say to keep the seventh day. It's a holy day. There's only one day of our week that is actually blessed. Wait, the seventh day, not the first day? Yeah, it's the first day. If you're worshiping on the wrong day, it's not the seventh day, and so you'd be, you wouldn't be blessed. So... That is actually correct. Okay, you cannot give a man more than 40 stripes for his judgment of his wickedness. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no firstborn child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. It didn't actually say firstborn child. If your brother dies and has no child, you oh. should take his wife. But would that make a difference, firstborn? I think that would make a difference. That wouldn't make a difference. No, I guess it would. First I guess born it would be. child is just no child at all. I guess that'd be the first I suppose born. it would be. All right, one seventy-three. If a woman comes to defend her man, grabs the other man's private, she will cut off her hand. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the feast of Sukkot. 
All right, so that is it, guys. Those are the commands that people have nailed to the cross and they don't want to do anymore. Um, and they are, again, they, they need to be fleshed out a little bit. Um, we will be doing that in the next week and we will definitely get this going. Um, and we are heading into our Bible reading for today. Uh, it's not the sacred. Uh, no. It's Targum. It's Targum. Oh, I did, I did it wrong, huh? I totally botched this. Now it's over. All right. So hang tight, everybody, as I get my little thing going here, and, or not. And now we got it. Getting old. Getting old is rough, folks. <laughs> All right. And here we are. Okay. So today we are going over Bereshith 19. Um, and for those who have never hung out with us before, we are um, in the bottom of this scriptures right here. At, at uh, This is called the uh, Yahoo is Scriptures, um, formerly known as another scriptures, but it is now Yahoo is Scriptures. And um, at the top, it's called the Targums, which is yet another translation. And so we are going through the Targums, which is a lot different than the Torah that we know. And we're finding the differences in it and we're going with it. And everybody ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's lock and load. Okay. Genesis 19. Let me get, get that off the screen real quick. And the two messengers came to Saddam in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Saddam. And when Lot saw them, he rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, look, please, my masters, please turn in to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet and rise up early and go your way. And they said, no, but let us spend the night in the open square. Okay, why wouldn't... Why was this a bad idea to spend the night in the open square in Sodom? So for anyone that wasn't around in the last chapter, the chapter before that, Saddam, Sodom, was a very evil place. If you got left out in the streets, they would give you all this stuff, and they'd rob you, and they'd beat you up. They would kill you, basically, if you were left out in the street. There was no place where you'd go. They wouldn't feed you. It was a very wicked place. It was just a place of great evil. And that's why it gets destroyed. But for but they wanted to see the people. They wanted the angels, the messengers, want to see really what's up. What is going on out here? Why are these people? Why is there such an outcry to the to the father? Yep. Okay. Three. But he urged them strongly, and they turned into him and came into his house, and he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Saddam, both old and young, all the people from every part surrounded the house. Okay, um, this is, I believe, where the word sodomite comes from. I mean, I, I think this is where this is. I would is, think this origination of it. This is, I, you, would, you would think, right? So let's continue on. Five. And they called the lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us and let us know them. Okay, uh, this isn't good. This isn't looking good at all. Six. So lot went out to them through the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, please, my brothers, do not do evil. Okay. Now, um, Lot is uh, Lot's a funny guy, right? Yeah, we Lot's a real funny dude. Um, number one, he's he's in a very violent city, and he knows everything that is about to go on. Who was it that asked me this morning? Why didn't Lot go out with a baseball bat and me. go swinging? Yeah. So Lot didn't go out with a baseball bat swinging because there were a ton of people out there, and had he gone out with a baseball bat, they would have killed him. And then they would have done whatever they want to do with everybody else. So that is why Lot did not do that, because he's in a mix of very evil people. Okay, eight. Look, please, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you and do to them as is good in your eyes. Only do no deed to these men, because they have come under the shadow of my roof. Okay, so Lot's getting the Parent of the Year award right here <laughs> as he... Um, you know, it, it, failure yeah, he, he's a he's a this guy's a complete failure. Unfortunately, um, the fact he's even in the city is, is leads to that him being a failure on this whole thing. I don't have much to say about this. Anyone else? Uh, I'm just I'm, I'm disappointed in Lot's uh, decisions. Well, he, what what else is he supposed to say? Back up, go away. I mean, yeah, he, go away. He offered his daughters in a way not to break Torah because if the, they would have gone into the men per se that would have broke torah worse right so he he tried to give them an opportunity but at the same time this the, this entire family nobody off nobody should ever offer up their 
kind of like that. Uh, yeah, you, those are those are situations that unless you were there, it is hard to walk a mile in a man's moccasins that were not there. And you don't know exactly. It would have been an extremely stressful position. He would have been the um, the weaker of this group of crazy thugs that were trying to do this. And so um, it's amazing he probably lived through this. Okay, nine. But they said, stand back. And they said, this one came into sojourn. And should he always judge? How Now we are going to treat you worse than them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot and came near to break down the door. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with him and shut the door. All right, now we're heading back. We're heading up to the Targums, which again is a lot different than this. And we are definitely trying to see what is the difference between the Targums and the Torah that we all know and love. Okay, here it comes. Anything in there? It's cool. The grand says, reminds me kind of the story of the Levite's concubine. Yeah, that's oh, the judges. Oh, is the judges? Yeah. Uh, which one? Oh, is that the... That's uh, the one where uh, they ended up... with, like, 13 pieces. Is that when he, like... Sent all the tribes yeah. and, like, exiled Benjamin from, like, living... Yeah, just, Benjamin almost got uh, annihilated they, for that. Yeah, they almost lost everything. Because it took them a while before... Because they promised them no women after yeah, that, Yeah, no right? women. So, uh, ben Benjamin went and stole his women. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Two messengers came to Saddam at the evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Saddam. And Lot saw and rose up to meet them from the gate of the tabernacle. And he bowed his face to the ground and said, I beg now, my lords, turn now hither and enter the house of your servant and lodge and wash your feet, and you will arise and proceed on your way. And they said to him, No, for in the street we will lodge. And Lot sat in the gate. And this is a, this, we're, we're not actually duplicating what we're about to say. This is yet another translation. Um, when it says Jerusalem like this, for those who do not know, this is yet another translation. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and he saw them. And ran and saluted them and bowed with his face to the ground. And wash your feet and wash you in the morning and go to your tents in peace. And it skips. Did it, it skip. mess up? No, so it skips. Like, so if some parts in the verse are the exact same as the others, it will skip and it will go to parts that's not the same. Okay. All right. So it's kind of sporadic here. And they said to him, no, for in the open place of the city we will lodge. And he persuaded them earnestly and they turned aside to be with him. And they entered his house, and he made a repast for the, and prepared unloved cakes. That just didn't sound right. And it seemed to him as if they did eat. Why did it say that? And it seemed to him as if they did eat. They were messengers. They're angels. And then the Jerusalem version, it says, um, and it appeared as if they ate and drank. But we, we discussed this. What, 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 uh, what program did we discuss this on? It was just the other day. It was like last Shabbat. It was, was last it last Shabbat? Yeah. We asked, we were discussing. It with it. Abraham and they were Abraham. Yeah. With Abraham. Right. Okay, so it appeared to eat, which is very interesting. All right. Maybe they don't eat. Maybe they just. They appear to eat? Or do they just, what, they just like make the food vanish in their hands? Maybe it makes them sick. Maybe they can't eat this stuff. Maybe, they, they, maybe they're not built to eat. I don't know. Okay. okay. Here we go. They had not yet lain down when the wicked men of the city, the men of Saddam, came around upon the house from the youth to the old man, all the people throughout. And they cried to Lot and said to him, where are the men who entered with thee tonight? Bring them out to us. We will lie with them. And Lot went out to them to the gate and shut the door after him. And he said, I pray, my brethren, do not thus wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters who have had no dealing with a man. I would now bring even them out to you to do them as is meet before you, rather than you should do evil to these men, because they have entered into lodge under the shadow of my roof. Okay, and then the, uh, the other translation says, And Lot said to them, Wait here a little, till we have besought mercy before Yahuwah, who, will, who, who have not known dealing with man. Okay, you like to continue on here? Yeah. Okay, and they said, Give up this. And they said, did not this come along to sojourn among us? And behold, he is making himself a judge and judging the whole of us. But now we will do worse to thee than to them. And they prevailed against the man, against Lot greatly, and came near to shatter the door. And the men stretched forth their hands and brought Lot unto them in the house and shut the door. Okay. But Okay, so let's continue on. So now we're heading back to the bottom, which is Yah's scriptures. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, and they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, a son-in-law and your sons and your daughters and whomever you have in the city? Bring them out of this place, for we are going to destroy this place, because the cry against them has grown great before the face of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah has sent us to destroy it. 
And Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-laws who had married his daughters and said, get up, get out of this place for Yahuwah is going to destroy the city. But to his sons-in-law, he seemed to be as one joking. And when morning dawned, the messengers ur urged Lot to hurry saying, get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand and his wife's hand and the hands of his two daughters, Yahuwah having compassion on him, and they brought him out and put him outside the city. And it came to be when they had brought them outside that he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be consumed. And Lot said to them, oh no, Yahuwah, look, please, your servant has found favor favor in your eyes and you have increased your kindness which you have shown me by saving my life but I am unable to escape to the mountains lest calamity overtake me and I die okay why do you think this guy thought calamity was going to overtake him in the mountains uh, I, I don't exactly know I'm thinking maybe he's scared of like animals in the mountains or maybe he's like not prepared for living in like a mountain he would be a single man with four women three women and um, it would probably be Probably harder to deal with, but, you know, if you survive the uh, town of Sodom, I think you could, uh, you know, probably make it to the mountains. Anyway, he was freaked out. All right, let's continue on. Should we going up to the top yet? No, the last verse. Okay, 20. Look, please, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is small. Please, let me escape there. Is it not a small matter, and let my life be saved? Okay, and then we're heading to the top? Yep. Okay, so we're back to the top. But the men... Who were at the gate of the house, they struck with a suffusion of the eyes from the young to the old, and they wearied themselves to find the gate. The other translation says, with blindness. Okay. And the men said to Lot, hast thou yet in this city kinsman or brother, thy son-in-law, thy sons, and thy daughters? Take forth from the place, for the cry of it before Yahuwah is great, and Yahuwah hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went forth and spake with his sons-in-laws who had taken his daughters and said, Arise, come forth from this place, for Yahuwah destroyeth the city. But the word was as a wonder, and he as a man ranting in the eyes of his sons-in-laws. And at the same, at the time that the morning was about to uprise, the messengers were urgent upon Lot, saying, Up, take thy wife and thy two daughters who are with you, lest you perish in the condemnation of the inhabitants of this city. But he delayed, and the men laid hold on his hand, and on his hand of his wife, and on the hand of his two daughters, for mercy from Yahuwah was upon them. And they brought them forth and set them without the city. It, okay, let's stop right there because it sounds like almost like they grabbed them and transported them out of the city. Did anyone catch that? Yeah, I think, I don't know, maybe they can teleport. Maybe they can teleport or something, but it's like something about them grabbing their hands and they were like outside of the city. Okay, let's continue on. They just move really fast. Yeah, I think they do. And it was as they led them without, one of them returned into Sodom to destroy it. So there's the one that came to destroy it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And one remained with Lot and said to him, be merciful for your life. Be merciful to your life. Look not behind you and stand not in all the plain to, to, the, to the mountain escape or you perish. And Lot said to him, I beseech thee, uh, I beseech of thee endure with me a little hour until I have prayed for mercy from Yahuwah, from before Yahuwah. And the other... Jerusalem translation says, and it was at the time of the upcoming of the column of the morning. And then it goes on and I guess that was, skips it. Yeah. Skips and then it says, later. be steadfast here a little with us until I have besought mercy before Yahuwah. Behold, now thy servant hath found mercy before thee and thou hast multiplied the kindness thou hast done in me, done me in saving my life. And I am not able to escape to the mountain lest evil overtake me and I die. Behold, now I pray, this city, it is, it is a near habitation and convenient for us to escape thither. It is small, and the guilt thereof light. I will flee thither then. Is it not a little one, and my life shall be preserved? Okay. Any thoughts? Anyone have anything? No, he, he just wants to, he wants to basically live. He doesn't want to die. He's cares for his life. <laughs> yes, he does. The grand says law bargaining with messengers. That's either bold or stupid. Well, yeah, Abraham, uh, he uh, was going with, you know, not against y'all, but he was... Uh, begging for he, their lives. He, yeah, he was begging for their lives as well. He was uh, negotiating with y'all. My brother Brunson says it's like, beam me up, Scotty. It, it did, did seem like, beam me up, Scotty. Get me out of this cesspool. Okay, 21. And he said to him, look, 
I have found, I have favored you concerning this matter also, without overthrowing the city for which you have spoken. Okay, what did he say? I didn't understand what he said. Who's saying what? He Lot wants to go to a, to a city instead of there. Okay, so this is an angel talking back to him? Yeah, yeah. He said to him, look, I have favored you concerning this matter also without overthrowing the city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I am not able to do any deed until you arrive there. So the name of the city was called Zoar. So from the last chapter when we had the Targums, what that we did not get from the regular Torah is that Abraham had three messengers. One messenger went up to the Shemaim after. One messenger was to destroy the city and one messenger was to get Lot out. So one messenger, we're talking like some serious soldier. Like this is, this is the powerhouse. One, one angel is able to just annihilate the entire city. Brought the angriest dude with them. It, one of them, yeah. Who knows? You know, imagine being that messenger that was made for destruction like that. It, what a crazy, what a crazy trip. Okay, 23. The sun had risen upon the earth. Did I do 22? Mm, Everyone? Yes. Yeah, the city was named Zoar. Okay. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. And Yahuwah rained sulfur and fire on Sodom and Amorah from Yahuwah out of the Shemaim. So he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back from behind and she became a post of salt. Okay, a lot of people don't believe that. A lot of people do not believe this or a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people were they're like, why would he turn a woman to salt? Why would he do this to somebody? What do you guys think about this? She disobeyed. She disobeyed, right. Why did she look back? Uh, it actually okay, it, if we read it in the Targum. It's not in the Targum. Okay. Um, Jasher, it says uh, she had the uh, compassion. She was worried about her other children that stayed, right? She looked back to see if they were coming out or not, and they weren't coming out. Right. And so um, thoughts about becoming a pillar of salt? Uh, wild. I've seen I've seen that in some things. It said is the pillar of salt is there to this day or something. Yeah, like it's it. Jasher. How could that even? The animals still lick it. The an, yeah, I mean, I don't think, I don't, a, a certain amount of rain in that pillar of salt is going to be gone. I don't know, man. If you have builds it, it might not go away. You don't think? Is a pillar of salt? I don't know. We have salt licks for the for the cows would, here, and they Would disappear. Lot have looked back for his wife turning to a pillar of salt? Uh, maybe he she, maybe was holding she, her hand. Maybe, maybe she was in front of him. Maybe he had his hand in her hand, and all of a sudden it became like stone, and he like looked down at the hand, and he had to like break the grip free because... She was like salt crashed around his hand. I don't know. I don't know. No I have idea. no idea how that went. Um, well, you don't think he'd look back at his wife like just a pillar of salt as he's running back? You think he just like just ignored it, just kept going? Like, well, you know, I would have to say the best of that would have been the best case scenario because they raised up an entire population of very evil people and they all got wiped out. The entire family gets wiped out. So, all right, let's continue. 27. And Abraham rose early in the morning to the place where he had stood before Yahuwah. And he looked towards Sodom and Amorah and toward all the land of the plain. And he looked and saw the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. Thus it came to be when Elohim destroyed the cities of the plain that Elohim remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. Okay, heading back up to the Targums at the top. And he said, behold, I have accepted thee in this matter also that I will not overthrow the city for which thou hast spoken to destroy it, that thou mayest escape to it. Hasten and flee thither, for I cannot do any till thou hast entered there. Therefore he called the name of the city Zoar. The sun had passed the sea and, had, and come forth upon the earth at the end of three hours and Lot entered into Zoar. Okay, what are we talking about here? The well, sun- It took him three hours to get there. The sun had passed the sea so I'm guessing the sun's rising. Is that what it's saying? Yeah, it feels right. They left early in the morning. I think before right before the sun was up or something to that degree. And I think it's like the sun's coming up. It's going to be like maybe like eight in the morning. Yeah. Okay. And the word of Yahuwah had caused showers of favor to descend upon Sodom and Amorah. Favors. Showers of favors. Yep. Yeah. Wow. To the intent that they might work repentance, but they did. They did it not, so that they said, "Wickedness is not manifest before Yahuwah." Behold, then there are now sent down upon them sulfur and fire before the word of Yahuwah from heaven. Okay, the other translation says this. And the word of Yahuwah himself had made to descend upon the people of Sodom and Amorah showers of favor that they might work repentance from their wicked works. But when they saw the showers of favor, they said, so our wicked works are not manifest before him. He turned then 
and caused them to cause he he sorry guys he turned then and caused to descend upon them what is that bitumen 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 and fire from before yahuwah from the heavens okay hold on real quick um what are we what are we dealing with on this whole thing? Anyone? So we, I don't know. Somebody put down showers of favor and they all thought Showers that, of favor. They thought that Yah was going to love them. He thought that they were all righteous. He can't see their wicked deeds. Huh. So I wonder what the showers of favors were. All right. Um, there we go. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and the herbage of the earth. And his wife looked after the angel to know what would be in the end of her father's house. For she was of the daughters of the Sedemi. Okay. And because she sinned by salt, Bemlicha, she was manifestly punished. Behold, she was made a statue of salt. So she was a corrupted DNA anyways. Well, corrupt. I mean, Sodomite? The yeah, people well, of Sodom were like Nimrod's people. Um, yeah, I mean, it, was, it, was a, it wasn't great DNA, but she was a Sedemi. And because she sinned by salt... What does that mean, she sinned by salt? Well, someone's salt shaker? I don't know. No. What does this mean? Anyone have any thoughts? I, I, I had no idea how I you sin by either. salt. And it says, Ben Milka. She was manifestly punished. Behold, she was made a statue of salt. All right, let's see what the other translation says. And because the wife of Lot was of the children of the people of Sodom, she looked behind her to see what would be the end of her father's house. And behold... She was made to stand a statue of salt until the time of the resurrection shall come when the dead shall arise. So I guess she's still there. Yeah, but wouldn't we have pictures of this woman like somewhere? I mean, we're, we're in the information age. If she was still standing there where this was, somebody would have a pillar of salt. This would have been like mainstream news or it wouldn't be mainstream news, but it would people would say here, this is this is this proves all of this stuff, right? She could have gotten maybe like buried somewhere and she still no one's found her. Yeah, maybe, she, maybe she's buried under the ground. So who knows? Wow. Okay, let's continue on. And Abraham arose in the morning and went to the place where he had ministered in prayer before Yahuwah. And he looked towards... Maybe she says there are the pictures of the salt are there. Oh, okay. Well, there the we salt go. salt pillar are there. Ah, well, there we go. I haven't seen it, um, but I will believe Mesh. So there we go. I guess the salt pillar is there and maybe one of us should go look that up one of these days. Perfect. Okay. And he looked towards Sodom and Amorah and all the land of the plain and saw, and behold, the smoke of the land went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it was when Yahuwah destroyed the cities of the plain that he remembered the righteousness of Abraham and sent Lot from the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities wherein Lot had dwelt. All right. Let's continue on. Now we're heading back down to the bottom here. 30. 30. And Lot went up out of Zohar and dwelt in the mountains with, and his daughters his two daughters were with him for he was afraid to dwell in zoar and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave okay um wonder why he was afraid to dwell in zoar he, he wanted to go there first of all he said it was a small place um they probably found out he was from sodom you think they beat up the people from sodom i'm sure they didn't allow them there why so those people are violent those people are wicked yeah i don't i zoar looks like zoar was going to be destroyed as well or something of the sort before uh, Lot. Ye Yehoshua talks a lot about zoar what is zoar and zidon yeah weird Okay, so he goes and hangs out in a cave with his two daughters. Okay, and the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come into us, as is the way of all the earth. Okay, what are, I know what, I, I'm not going to explain what they're saying here, but why do they think there's no man left on the earth? Uh, um, because they just came out of this thing from Sodom, right, where everyone's, like, burned alive, and, like, there's nothing left of it. They're going to be freaking out when they find out these people. In, in Zoar, they pro people would start, when, when a city or something big happens, people start scrambling, right? All of a sudden, even if they were in Zoar, all of the people would be coming rushing in. Did you hear about what happened to Sodom and Amora? And all this stuff, it would have been, it would have been crazy. Um, but, yeah, they thought the entire world, I believe, was destroyed, and so that is what got their thinking that way. Okay, let's continue on. 32. Come, let us make our father drink wine and lie with him so that we preserve the seed of our father. Okay? So they made their father drink wine that night and the firstborn went in and lay with her father and he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she arose. Okay. And he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she arose. Okay. Um, she left in Sodom. I'm going to call um, horse hockey on this. I'm not, this isn't, I don't believe... This is real. I do have, um, I, I, you know, I'm from Babylon. I've drank wine before. I've drank liquor before. 
Um, it's not something good. It's not something you guys should do. I, I wouldn't encourage it, but there's no command against that. Um, but this is, this, I don't believe this part. I do not believe that they got the father liquored up and they went in and this act happened. I do not believe it could have gone down quite like this. And for those who know what I'm talking about, that's, I just don't believe this is real. Okay, or what they say. Let's continue on. 34, and it came to be on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, see, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight as well, and you go in and lie with him so that we keep the seed of our father. Okay? Um, you need to explain this because Mesh says, what are you denying the word, brother? They slept with their father. That is why Moab is cursed. But it's not the whole act. No, it, it, was, it has nothing to do with it. Mesh, this is, what I'm talking about is if you're sitting here trying to drink a tremendous amount of wine and you are liquored up to the point where you can't remember anything, you're not going to be able to complete an act like this. You're not going to, rem it's not going, it doesn't go down like this, right? <laughs> when you get so liquored up, you're, you're going to be incapable of any of this and you're also going to, it's, it's not going to happen. Like he knew what was going on. That's yeah, you, you would know. If you, and, and if you are not that liquored up, then you will have brief memories. You would remember your daughter coming in naked and you doing this kind of an act, right? What I am denying is the account that the, that the father did not remember anything, right? It says right here, it says he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she arose. And you just fostered two children in two separate nights. I, that's what I do not believe. And so if anyone has had an experience where you are completely liquored up and you can do all this kind of stuff, I would love to hear it. It just, it doesn't happen. And so um, Lot was, my, my point is this, is Lot was complicit with this entire thing. If you think Lot was some sort of innocent guy and he just started drinking wine and then had no idea that he had sex with his daughters, that's that's not real. And so that I've always called horse hockey on that particular thing because Lot obviously was aware of everything. Okay, continue on. Thus, both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. And the firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. And the younger, she also bore a ch son and called his name Ben Ami. He is the father of the children of Ammon to this day. All right, so let's continue on and let's go up to the, um, the last part of this. And Lot went up from Zoar and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him because he feared to reside in Zoar. And he dwelt in a cavern, he and his two daughters. And the elder said to the less, our father is old and there is no man in the land to come to us after the way of the whole earth. And the other translation says, and there is not a man in the land who may come with us after the law of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and when he is drunken, we will lie with him and raise up sons from our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and he was drunk. And the elder rose and lay with her father, nor did he know when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it was the day following, and the elder said to the lest, Behold, now I lay, I lay my evening with my father. With, <laughs> now I lay my evening with the father, let us make him drink wine this night also, that he may be drunk, and go thou and lie with him, that we may raise up sons from our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and he was drunk, and the younger arose, and lay with him, and he knew not in her lying down, nor in her rising up. So the part I dispute is this. He knew not in her lying down, nor in her rising up. The rest of the story, I totally believe, and it's credible. That part, I just don't believe Lot was innocent. Okay, and the two daughters of Lot became with child by their father, and the elder brought forth a son, and she called his name Moab, because from her father she had conceived. He is the father of the Moabi unto this day. And the younger also brought forth a son, and she called his name Bar Ami, because he was a son of her father. He is the father of the Ammonite people unto this day. All right, well, we made it out. Um, Anyone else have anything out there? Anyone else in the chat room? It has been a fun time with all of you guys out there. We love you guys all. We appreciate you all. And we hope that you guys have a wonderful day. And um, hope you guys are getting something out of these little lessons that we're having. Um, anyone else? Anything, gentlemen?
Uh, yeah. I think that's it. It's just a uh, Lot's story is a crazy story. I don't think we hear anything else after this about him. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know so much we have much out of Lot other than this. Um, he did raise up two uh, families that did end up getting um, cursed. Owned. Yeah, cursed for sure. And um, it is, I guess, it's supposed, it is what it is. Yeah, and, and like Brother Glenn says, some of it... Um, it's, what it may say it simply doesn't make sense to say that don't deny it uh brother i i'm not gonna i'm not gonna argue with you on this whole thing um i i, I have to, as a person with common sense i will deny that a man is able to get liquored up and do this act i i, I just don't know um any other way around that um if, if some man has done this and doesn't know what he did i i just that alcohol doesn't work like that and so I have had plenty of experience with alcohol, and so I'm, I'm not talking out of my rear or anything. So, all right, you testify that I'm false. You do that, brother. All right, um, so everybody else, um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Anyone else need anything? Hold on. Uh, Emissary Velahim says, look at the Septuagint. I got to pull it up. It'll take a minute. Um, where is it at? All right, let's take a look at Septuagint. All right, hang tight. We're looking at the Septuagint, guys. Let's see what it says. Let's get a second witness here. All right, Mesh. I, I see you're, you're a little fired up there, brother. You're all good, brother. Relax. We're, we're Genesis 19, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Towards Genesis. the end. Hold on, I'm getting it. Yes, we are on an incline. I definitely see that. All right, okay, let's continue. So what's it say in Septuagint? We're all looking here, folks. You want to read this? Yeah, what's it say? Yeah, I don't know where you want to start on there, but like down at the bottom, if you can read that. I don't know. Okay, and here. Lot went up out of Segor. This is out of the Septuagint. And dwelt in the mountains, and he and his daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Segor. And he dwelt in a cave, and his two daughters with him. And the elder said to the younger, our father is old, and there is no one on earth who shall come into us as is, it is fit in all the earth. Come, let us make, let's see, how do I get over there? Our father drink wine, and let us sleep with him, and let us raise up seed from our father. So they made their father drink wine in that night, and the elder went in and lay with her father that night, and he knew not when he slept and when he rose up. Okay, so that is way different, right? That does not say, see this, he knew not when he slept and when he rose up. That is a lot different than what we have here. Yes, this is, um, let's take a look at this. Where is, uh, where is it? Right here. So let's take a look. 33, I think. 33? All right, this is, okay, let's see here, 33? Right there. Yeah. Yeah. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she arose. Okay. So that says it's completely different, right? It, when it, it's going to that. He, and it said, it's talking about th not the act, but it's talking about like he didn't know when she got up or laid down, right? And, and so. Let me see here. 34. And it came to pass on the morrow that the elder said to the younger, behold, I slept yesternight with our father. Let us make him drink wine in this night also. And do thou go in and sleep with him and let us raise up seed of our father. So they made their father drink wine in that night also. And the younger went in and slept with her father. And he knew not when he slept nor when he arose. Okay. So that says a lot different. I think the Septuagint is the, is the better of that. That is the second witness, which I guess it concludes that the man is, it, you know, um, <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Lot was a criminal in this as well. And if he was not, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Either way, that uh, evil has been done. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Um, everybody, I guess uh, this is good. Ironic blessing. Oh, ironic blessing. Yeah. Jade, read that with authority, will you please? Yep. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aaron and unto his sons, saying, on this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Yes, beautiful. 
All right. Yep. And um, yeah, so I guess this is it, everybody. Much love to everybody out there. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May he forever shine his light upon you guys. May you guys be forever in his Torah. May you forever be on the kingdom road. And may you forever have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. Guys, we love you guys very, very much. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. We truly enjoy these discussions with you guys. Um, even if there's drama in the discussions, we love you guys. And um, it, it's always worth discussing. All of this stuff is worth discussing. I don't think there should be anything hidden or any of that stuff. So um, the translations are the key, right? We need second witnesses and all that. And, um, you know, I, I don't think a man is going to be able to do that kind of stuff. And we will leave it at that. Okay. Anyone else? That is it. All right. Let's call it.
Shalom, everybody. Have a good day. Shalom. Shalom.